Hello, and welcome back for more of Teaching with Creativity Season 2. I'm Mary Degani, and I'll be your host for today's show. I'm a content specialist here at EducationCloset.com, your digital learning hub for arts integration and STEAM. I'm so excited that you're able to join me today because I'd like to talk to you about something very near and dear to my heart, music. Yes, I've been playing the flute for over 40 years and I'm also an Orff Schulwerk music specialist. Ironically, I don't work as a music specialist. I'm fortunate enough to be a STEAM teacher on special assignment at TOSA and I teach the arts in and through the STEM content areas. Because of my extensive background in music, I do have an advantage when it comes to integrating anything having to do with music. However, I'm very much aware that there are many of you out there who are more than a little apprehensive about integrating music into your content areas. You know, music can be pretty intimidating. But I'm here today to give you support and hopefully provide you with a simple to use idea that you can integrate into your math content area when you're teaching addition, repeated addition, or multiplication at any grade level. So you ready? Here we go. We're going to start with some simple body percussion. For those of you who have been fortunate enough to see the group stomp, you know how complex and exciting body percussion really can be. And it's amazing how many timbres they get just by slapping, tapping, and stomping on the stage. And for those of you who are interested in learning more, I've included a link in the show notes to the website of one of the most influential musicians when it comes to body percussion. It's a gentleman by the name of Keith Terry, and I highly encourage you to check out his website when you get a chance. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to use just four places on our body to create our sounds for our body percussion. They are our feet, we're going to stomp, pat on our thighs, clap, and snap. And by the way, when you're working with your little ones, if they ever say, but teacher, I can't snap, you tell them, fake it till you make it, okay? That's all you have to know. Stomp. Pat, clap, snap. We're going to begin our lesson with direct imitation. And with imitation, you are essentially just going to copy me, but not at the same time. Oftentimes, to clarify, I will have to say with my little ones, I'll say, be my echo, or sometimes I'll use the term, my turn, your turn. This way, they know that they don't do what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Their job is to watch and listen and then to copy me when I'm done. We're going to be using four beat phrases. In music, we have what we call common time or 4 for time, and that's the simplest level to start at. So basically what it is is four quarter notes. So tap, tap, tap tap and it just keeps going over and over and um, I'm going to play four beats and you're gonna play it right back to me and I trust that you're doing it out there okay so here I go one two echo me pat pat clap clap pat clap snap clap stomp pat Stomp, pat. Stomp, pat, clap, snap. So you get the idea. I play it, you play it. This could go on forever with the little ones, trust me, in those primary classrooms. Your students might even get so good at it. They can take a turn being a leader and the rest of the class can imitate them. And actually, that's a good sign because that's when you know it's time to move on to the next level. One thing you can do 
to make it a lot more fun is you can add music. Any music in 4-4 time, such as uh, just a few suggestions like the theme song from Rocky, the theme song from Beverly Hills Cop, Star Wars theme, etc., etc. You get the idea. You know, practice at home first, and any of those songs would work. I would also suggest using pieces of music without words. This gives the kids the opportunity to focus on the activity and not on the lyrics of the song. So I know what you're thinking about now. Hey Mary, where's the math? Well, so far we've just been counting to four. That's why this entry level is good with your little ones. Baby steps. Let's step up the process and have a musical conversation. This is called question answer. And just like a conversation with your friends, a musical conversation needs to be interesting and exciting. We don't want to repeat each other's words because that would get really boring fast. So once the students have gotten really good at stomping, patting, clapping, and snapping, it's time to change it up. So in a musical question and answer in our conversation, what happens is the four beats belong to the first person, which would be the teacher in this case, and the student answers back four original beats. So they're no longer copycatting. And this takes a little longer because of that processing. They have to think of what they're going to do and they have to keep that steady beat going. So it might take a little while, but trust me, it's well worth it to push through that learning phase. And don't forget to point out that your four beats plus their four beats is, four plus four is eight. So you are actually creating eight beats together. And so let's do a little practice. And I'm going to trust that you're giving me an answer back at home. So question. One, two, here I go. Pat, pat, clap, snap. Your answer. Pat, pat, clap, pat. Answer. Three, four. Stomp, stomp, snap, snap. Answer. Two, three, four. Pat, pat, clap, pat. Answer. You get the idea. So just back and forth, four and four. Um, imagine if we were writing this out, we could use a one by four array, kind of like this. <laughs> and I've written out my stomp, clap, pat, clap. And I'm going to ask the kids, how could you take your own four beat answer and turn it into eight beats. Well, in music we have something called a repeat. It's two parallel lines with two dots, kind of like a colon, and then at the end of the repeat is are the two the colon with the two parallel lines. So everything within those two symbols gets repeated. So this what I've written down for you would go stomp clap, pat, clap, stomp, pat, clap, pat. Now what's happening is the kids are playing four beats but twice. So four, two times four is eight. And okay, we're getting into multiplication here. So now we could have a musical conversation where I'm going, okay, I'm gonna play, repeat my pattern and you repeat yours. So I have Stomp, clap, pat, clap, stomp, clap, pat, clap. Your turn, three, four. Repeat, two, three, four. Got it? So now we have eight and eight. So it's very interesting. Now we have many ways to make eight. I could have four and your four, or I could repeat my four. We're starting to get into repeated addition or multiplication here. Okay, imagine if the kids go and find a partner 
and have to write that out. This would also be a good way for you to assess them. You can see what they're doing and if they understand it and they can write it out. So it's kind of like the beginning steps of writing out their music in non-standard notation. Okay, and I just thought of a question. Would it be okay for a student, if you're doing question answer, to answer you with four of the same responses? For instance, if you were doing four questions, four beats of a question and four beats of an answer, and the student answered you by just going clap, 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 clap. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Okay, that's where the student is secure, and our hopes would be that they could use all four levels of body percussion. However, there are gonna be some students that maybe they're just not ready to move into that arena yet so they're if if they could just pat four times and keep that steady beat you're on the right track I'm gonna stop for a second and have a little reality check with you if your district is anything like mine our students have had little to no formal music training other than that what they've done at home and in private lessons so keeping a steady beat and body percussion is very new to all of our kids. And if I were starting this, I would have to use these basic, the um, imitation and the question and answer with my upper graders. And I would need to teach them this and solidify it before I could start incorporating the math. So think about that when you're working with your kids. So let's move on and assume that all of our students can confidently maintain a musical conversation with you or with another student and create eight beat phrases. What if you ask them to work with their partner and turn their eight beat phrase into a 16 beat phrase? How would you do that? Well, they could take their eight beat phrase, for instance, their phrase with the repeat, and add it to their partner's phrase with the repeat. And if I'm not mistaken, two times four plus two times four is 16, isn't it? Here's where the algebra comes in. <laughs> and this is where it gets good and meaty. <laughs> So if you ask them to work with their partner, they could start writing out equations to match up to their patterns. Now, one thing we could also look at is taking partners writing an eight beat phrase, putting repeat signs on the whole thing. For instance, eight times two or two times eight. What about, um, if I wrote eight and my partner wrote eight, we put them together, eight plus eight. There are so many different combinations they can use to make 16. And here are a few. Eight plus eight, two times eight, two times four plus two times four, and two times two times four. <laughs> How about that one? What would that one look like? Well, it would be two times four, but I repeat it two times. Asking the students to write out their equations would help to solidify how math is, a, is an essential part of creating musical phrases in 4-4. Don't believe me? Go check out that Star Wars theme again and you tell me if you don't hear groups of 16. Well, I don't know about you, but I can sincerely see spending a few minutes every day or every other day on this process because there's more. What would happen if you asked the students to now turn their 16 beats into 32? Imagine all of the combinations they could have 
just starting with that four beat phrase and a repeat sign. They could have 16 plus 16, 2 times 16, 2 times 4, plus 2 times 4, plus 2 times 4, plus 2 times 4, or 4 times 2 times 4. So all of these ways to make 32 beats. Now, the complexity though here is remembering what the pattern is. So using that repeat sign on a simple 4 beat phrase or 8 beat phrase is probably the most successful way to go. And I'd like to point out something about now, especially to those of you who may know a bit, a bit about music. Please note that the rhythms we were used today weren't anything more than four quarter notes. Since the objective our, of our lesson wasn't fractions, we kept it really simple and were able, we were able to focus on the use of addition or repeated addition or multiplication to build a musical phrase. And that was the whole point of my lesson. Well, I hope that I was able to share a simple music activity that you can integrate into your math lessons. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Share this with someone you think would benefit and leave a comment below. The best discussions and insights come from you, our viewers. And remember, you deserve to thrive as an educator. Let your creativity shine through. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time on Teaching with Creativity. So long for now.